All right. So in this question, first, we need to solve for x, um, both the inequalities. So we add the 6 first. So we get negative 2x is less than 0 plus 6, which is 6. And then when we divide both sides by negative 2, we have to change the direction of the inequality because we're dividing by a negative number. So this becomes x is greater than negative 3. Now when we try to solve the other one, we can move. There's a whole bunch of different ways to do this. I can move the 2x to the left, and I can move the negative 20 to the right. And if I do that, that makes it 2x is greater than negative 6 plus 20, which gives me 2x is greater than 14, which means x is greater than 7. Divide both sides by 2. Now, we do not have to change the direction of the inequality here because I did not divide by a negative number like I did in the problem on the left side. So here we have two inequalities. X is less, uh, I'm sorry, X is greater than negative 3 and X is greater than 7. So we can graph this. Now, x is greater than negative 3. We have to plug in a test point. I find that when people don't plug in test points, they make the arrows go the wrong way. So if we plug in, say, 0, 0 is greater than negative 3. That is a true statement. I would much rather have no money than owe someone $3. So 0 is somewhere here in the middle. So we have to go to the right. And I know it's an open circle because it's greater than. If it had been greater than or equal to, then I would make a closed circle. For the other one, x is greater than 7. So I make an open circle above 7. And again, I pick a test point. Let's say 0. 0 is greater than 7. That is not true. 0 is not greater than 7. So 0 would have been somewhere here in the middle. I do not go towards that number. I have to go away from it because zero is lying to me. So in order for me to run in the other direction, I would need to go to the right as well. And now because this is an and problem, we are looking for where there is a sandwich. Where are the two lines on top of each other? So are they on top of each other in this region? No, the lines don't even exist there. Are they on top of each other between negative 3 and 7? Uh, no, because the top line doesn't even exist there. It's only the bottom one. What about between 7 and infinity? Yes, that's where the two lines are on top of each other. So, the interval of the solution... Interval of the solution is where the two lines overlap. The overlap happens from 7 to infinity. How would we write? So this is the intermediate step. The final answer would be just the overlap, nothing else. So the overlap exists from 7 onwards. So this is the final answer, or the graph of the final answer. This is just our work to figure out what the answer is. That is not the final answer. The final answer is just the solutions. Where are the solutions? The solution exists wherever there's an overlap or where there's a sandwich. So. This is not the solution. This is not the solution. The solution just starts here and then goes to the right. So this is my final answer if the question is asking me to graph it on a number line. Now, you can say, okay, how do I write it as an interval? Well, we did that right here. So maybe I'll drag this down. Now, how would you write this as an inequality? Well, the solutions are all the numbers greater than 7. So the inequality... would be x is greater than 7. Now, hypothetically, that is, so this question is over, depending on what is being asked for. If they ask you for an interval, 
give this answer. If it's asking for an inequality, give this answer. If it's asking for a graph of the solution, give this answer. In an alternate universe, let's say you solve a problem. Actually, I need it to go the other way. Let's say different problem and it's an and question and this is what we get. So is the overlap in this region? No, there's only one line there, the top one. Is the overlap in this region? No, there's only one line there, the bottom one. Is there an overlap between negative three and seven? Yes, that is where the two lines are sandwiched. They're on top of each other. So the answer, the thing that we just drew above is the intermediate work or is the scratch work. The answer would be this. This is where the solutions are between negative three and seven. So this would be for the graph. If they ask us for an interval, the answer would be from negative three to seven. If they ask us for an inequality, well, we would say x is between negative three and seven. So how would you read, for instance, just this part? We would read it as negative three is less than x or x is greater than, oops, there. Negative 3 is less than x, or x is greater than negative 3. Now, how would we read? Yes, that, I guess I can't take it all the way there, so I'll hold it here temporarily. How would we read just that part that's blurry? We would read it as x is less than 7, or 7 is greater than x. So the question then becomes, how do you pick numbers between? Well, you put x in the middle, and you say x is greater than negative 3, but it is less than 7. So x is sandwiched between those two numbers. Now, as an alternative, if this had been a solid dot, then the overlap does occur here at negative 3. Then this would be a solid dot. And for the in interval, I would use a square bracket because whenever I have a solid dot, I have to use a square bracket. And for the inequality, I would use less than or equal to. So hopefully that helps.